So um, how a stem in our water fuel cell works is uh, that you charge the water until um, just before it overcomes the resistance of the water itself and, and discharge it. So, uh, so what you do is um, you charge it until it's, uh, the water charge is nearly full and then you, um, you short circuit it and you short circuit the, uh, the load or uh, the load of the capacitor into an external load, the light bulb. And, um, and what you're doing is you're just charging the, uh, the water and then you're discharging it, charging it, discharging it. And, and the effect that you get is this white opaque um, like cloud of gas. And the only other way that you can get this opaque uh, or this, the amount of gas that just pours off at the flick of the switch is if you use 12 volts at like 40, 50 amps. And, but what happens is uh, when you, uh, when you uh, overcome the resistance of the water, as with electrolysis, only one cell will, uh, will actually, so you might have a seven cell unit, only that one cell will produce all this hydrogen because there's an arc within that cell. And then at the point where, uh, you know, like all the voltage is instantly converted um, into amperage, um, like all this hydrogen is formed, but it's only formed within that one cell because that one cell has the arc in it. So um, with the Stanley Meyer water fuel cell, what it does is it short circuits uh, before it overcomes the resistance and then the entire surface area of, um, of the water fuel cell produces this massive amount, massive quantities of hydrogen and oxygen gases. So, um, uh, you know, I'm going to uh, turn my cell on and then turn it off for about a minute. And, uh, you know, just to show, uh, you know, that I'm not using any electrolytes, any salts or whatever, because um, if they have a bunch of people that uh, paste videos on the net and, you know, they're just making a fool of themselves because what's happening is um, they're using uh, electrolytes and crap and, uh, you know, that of course, they're, they're going to, you know, produce gases. But uh, the thing is, the, uh, like the, the electrolytes that they use is um, they're polar. So what happens is when the gases are released, they're actually uh, stuffed within the water because the, uh, the electrolytes have a charge and they, they bond, you know, and then they're like, oh, well, how can, I, how can I get the gases out of the water? Well, well, you know, you can't because it's um, they're bonded to the, the electrolyte because the electrolyte holds this charge, you know, which is just stupid, you know, that's how uh, polar reactions work within chemistry, you know, so, um, and, and then the, the other people that have, like, cells and then they only have, like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm only just using one cell in this video, you know, that's bullshit too because, um, like uh, they only have an arc within that one cell, so obviously they're using electrolysis. And, um, you know, when it overcomes the resistance and then discharges through the water, then you, you get like a cloud of uh, gases, but only with that, that one cell. You know, so the, the, the purpose of the Stanley Meyer process is to uh, short circuit it before, um, you know, you uh, overcome the resistance of the water and then externalize the load. When you externalize the load, all the um, all the amperage that is created from uh, basically um, from uh, from the water fuel cell capacitor, all the voltage is instantly converted into amperage, and that's what creates all the hydrogen. Um, you know, it's it, it, it's 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 external. So what happens is uh, the the fuel cell will never heat up. It will never um, uh, it will never uh, you know, you, 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 could, you could run it for hours on end and it will never heat up. It will just stay cold, you know. And uh, like, like when I run my cells, I run my cells on vacuum wet impulses. So like what happens is a coil is like a converter. And what it does is um, it takes uh, your amperage and upon switch closure, all the amperage is instantly converted into voltage and it's added to your net voltage of the coil. So, and, the, and it's the exact same thing with the water fuel cell capacitor, it's, it's a converter, that's what you do, you charge it with voltage and then uh, when, when it, like when, when you do uh, reach, um, like when you short circuit it, right, or you reach catastrophic failure of it, what happens is um, 
all the voltage within the uh, water fuel cell capacitors instantly converted into, uh, into amperage. So what, what a coil does, a coil uh, converts um, basically amperage into voltage. And then what a capacitor does is it converts voltage into amperage. And that's how an LC circuit works, you know. And what happens is there's an energy exchange and they both add energy to each other. And like this is called an infinite Q resonator. So in Darwin, when people have these uh, Stanley type Meyer uh, fuel cells, um, they, uh, they, they call them uh, infinite Q resonators. And the reason they call them infinite Q resonators is because uh, they're using LC resonance to cascade charge within the cells and then they discharge it before it reaches catastrophic failure. You know, and that's basically how it works. You know, so, so what I'm doing is I'm turning the cell on and then I'm turning it off uh, just to show that, uh, you know, this, the whole process doesn't work off um, electrolysis at all. It, it's not electrolysis, you know, that's why we uh, use the distilled water. Um, yeah, it's, it's very simple, you know, anyone can build this. So you just have uh, like one circuit they use as an optocouple and uh, goes to a PNP and then another circuit they use as an optocouple that goes to an MPN. And uh, like, it's simple, you know, you, you, you use the same frequency um, to go to each optocouple and the thing is uh, one's, one's actually, they, they, they switch on on and off and they alternate, you know, so one's feeding the fuel cell with high voltage pulses and then uh, the other one's like short circuiting it, you know, and so it's charge, short circuit, charge, short circuit at LC resonance. So, uh, you know, like uh, you use the uh, WFC 1.0 to measure the capacitance of your uh, water fuel cell. Uh, you use the digital multimeter to measure the um, inductance of your coil. And like the, the reason that I use back in meth is because like uh, the, the whole process is voltage dependent, amperage restricted. That's basically what back in meth is, you know, so it's simple. Anyone can build this. Yeah. So you watch these, you know, videos on YouTube with people that have their cells and only one cell is producing hydrogen. That's obviously electrolysis and you know, they're using an arc within that one cell. You know, that's not a Stanley Meyer water fuel cell. And then you see other videos with um, the, uh, the water within the cell takes on this yellowish tinge and crap. And, you know, that's obviously, um, you know, elect electrolysis with an electrolyte. You know, so, um, you know, it's, it's not the Stanley Meyer process. You know, so you need to... Um, you know, use a circuit where you use high voltage pulses or uh, high voltage back EMF impulses to charge a water fuel cell. And then you have to um, short circuit it before uh, it reaches catastrophic failure. And that's how simple it is, you know. And it's, then what, what, once, you, once you know uh, how the process works, it's so easy to replicate. You can build, you can build this using, um, you can, like I use two Petronics, uh, flamethrower e cores and they're connected in series. You know, that's my setup. You know, some people use uh, microwave transformers, you know, because they're really cheap to get. You know, um, uh, other people use Tesla coils. So uh, there's all different methods of doing this.